Hi everyone, this video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 4.3.8, Configuring Layer 3 Switching and Inner VLAN Routing. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Switching, Routing, and Wireless Essentials Version 7 Cisco Network and Academy Curriculum. Now, in this particular lab assignment in our layout there, we've got six, P or sorry, yeah, six PCs, PC0 through PC5, and they are connected to their respective switches that already have VLAN set up, so we don't have to do that. But we are going to configure that layer three switch. That is a new icon for us um, in the RSE, the SRWE class um, with the Cisco, with Cisco. So we are going to configure the layer three switch for the first time. We are used to that being a router. Now, so far with inner VLAN routing, we learned the traditional way, which you needed a separate interface separate cable from and this if this was a router from the switch to the router you would need one for every vlan you had so if you had 50 vlans you needed 50 physical separate connections in the last packet tracer assignment we learned how to configure um, sub interfaces using dot one q encapsulation so that we would only need one physical interface but it could carry traffic for multiple vlans that it became the default gateway for so we could route between vlans that's why we call it inner vlan routing and that method using one physical interface is called router on a stick now there is a third method which is basically replacing the router with a layer 3 switch layer 3 switches can actually do routing and switching together so layer 3 switches can operate as a router and a switch so they can do routing and route between different networks and you can actually take a interface and turn it into a routed interface and assign a IP address remember with layer 2 switches we could not do that so to get started here we're going to turn and I'm going to move this around over here so that we can see when I hover over this is G02 this is the port they're asking you to configure they're telling you to do no switch port so you can put an IP address on it so this becomes like the outside facing interface and it needs an IP address on it that it can share with this cloud network here so we're going to go into interface G02 on this layer 3 switch and assign it an IP address so we'll do enable config T sort of interface G02 no switch port. This lets it know that we are no longer going to operate like a normal switch on this port. Then we're going to do IP add 209.165.200.225.225 and then 255.255.255 and I believe that is a 252. Yep. A 252 address. Most of the time when you've got one device connected to another, like a router to another router, it's usually a 252. All right, then we can exit out. Now they should be able to ping between the cloud interface and G02 and the MLS device. Now we're going to add our VLANs. The VLANs have already been added to the other three switches down here. We're going to add it to MLS. So we're going to do the same command is VLAN 10 name and we're going to name it staff based off of our chart there. VLAN 20, name student. Remember, they are case sensitive for the grading. VLAN 30, name faculty. So now we've created those three VLANs. Remember, you can do a do show VLAN brief to make sure they're there. Now we're going to configure and activate the SVI interfaces. This is basically like making them the default gateway. And here, let's check and make sure VLAN 99 was created. Do show VLAN brief. 99 is already there. So we're going to do interface VLAN 10. Remember, we learned how to do this before. Interface VLAN 10. And then IP add 192.168.10.254.255.255.255.0. It automatically came up for us, and you notice that there. Now we're going to repeat this for 20, 30, and 99. Those IP addresses are up here at the top of our chart. So for 20, we'll do interface VLAN 20.68.20.254.255. Two five five two five five dot zero. Now we're going to exit. Then interface VLAN thirty, and then we're going to assign this IP address. IP add one nine two one six eight thirty dot two fifty four, and two five five two five five two five five dot zero. And then lastly, interface VLAN ninety nine, and then 
IP add 192.168.99.254.255.255.255.0. And all those interfaces automatically came up. So this is just like configuring the sub interfaces, except this is the way we do it for a layer three switch. Next, we're going to configure trunking on MLS. So the port that it shares with switch one, we need to make sure is a trunk link here. So right here, we are going to go to switch port mode trunk. We're going to specify the native VLAN is 99, and we're going to specify switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q. So interface G01, again, this is the one that it shares between MLS and S1 here. And we're going to do switch port mode trunk. You see it comes up for all the different interfaces. Okay. And then switch port. Because remember, the interface VLAN commands are not physical interfaces. They're virtual, kind of like the sub interfaces on the router we did before. So this is switch port um, mode trunk that allows it to carry all the VLAN traffic that we need between MLS and S1. Then we'll do switch port trunk native VLAN 99 to assign to the native VLAN. Now remember, we got to go make that match in a minute on S1's end. And then to uh, in, uh, assign the encapsulation, we do switch port. And then you can see all the different availabilities there. Trunk, encapsulation, whoops. And you can put encap and then dot one Q. So switch port trunk, encap dot one Q. So on this end, we had to do, on this G01 end, we had to do switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk native VLAN and assign whatever one, this one was 99, and then switch port trunk uh, encapsulation dot one Q. And then on the switch one end, because it's gonna note there's a mismatch, we need to go to interface, go to configuration mode, interface G01, which again is what it is on this end of S1. And we'll do switch port mode trunk that assigns it for be trunking mode and carry multiple VLANs, but then we need to make it match the native VLAN. Oops, sorry there. And it'll continue to bark at you until you fix it. So then switch port trunk native VLAN 99, and then you'll see it says unblocked in just a couple seconds. So now we are able to route between different networks here now you also notice like let's say we click on pc3 this one has ip version 6 as well all that we did just will support ip version 4 will not support ip version 6 okay even if we've got the trunking and everything you see here it says consistency restored um, even if we've got everything matched up uh, other places it will carry ip version 4 but it won't carry ip version 6 some of these pcs are running dual stack where you've got ip version 6 and ip version 4 running at the same time so to do that first we need to enable ipv6 unicast routing on our outside interface all right on the um router or the layer 3 switch and configure it for the rest of our vlans as well so first we'll do ipv6 unicast dash routing remember this is a command we learned back in our first Cisco networking in class to enable IPv6 commands and routing to take place. All right, the outside facing interface here, interface G02, we did assign an IP version 4 address to that after turning the switch port off. We did no switch port and then the IP command. So we'll go back into that. And if you notice here in our addressing chart, there is also a IP version six address here. And what I'm gonna do is make it easy on myself and copy that and paste it after I do IPv6 add, and I'm gonna use the paste button. I use copy C to get it, and then you have to use the paste button here. So it's IPv6 add, and then the IP address, IP version, sorry, IPv6 add, the IPv6 address slash the subnet mask, okay? 
So that assigned both of those. So now if I do a do show run, you'll notice that G02 here has both running at the same time and it notices not a switch port. All right, so now we're gonna configure the rest of them. So if you notice here, we've got a steel interface VLAN T and the one we've already done with IP version six, we need to do with IP version four. Sorry, the one we did with IP version four already, we need to do IP version six. So interface VLAN 10, I'm gonna copy and paste that. Sorry, I need to put IPv6 add there. All right. Then interface VLAN 20. IPv6 add, paste. Interface would be land 30. IPv6 add, paste. Interface would be land 99. That one does not have IP ver version 6, so we don't need to worry about that one. All right. Okay, so we put it on the outward facing interface. We did it on 10, 20, and 30. And the last thing um, I forgot to do earlier is in, in addition to the IPv6 unicast routing, we have to do just normal IP routing. On a normal router, we don't have to tell it to do that. It only does routing. But on a layer three switch, we do have to turn that on as well. And that should give us 100%. So now our PC should be able to ping between each other, IP version four or IP version six, and it's all handled. So PC zero, if it wants to talk to PC three, it would go from PC zero to switch two, switch two to switch one, switch one to the MLS switch, back down to switch one, down to switch three, over to PC three. And it doesn't have to be in the same VLAN at all. So no matter what VLAN they're a part of, this will still work. Now again, the end devices or the switch two and switch three has already been configured that these ports going over to the PCs are in access mode for whatever VLAN they are. And you can go take a look at it. You can do a enable uh, show VLAN brief and you'll see here if we widen this out uh, that ports FA2 through FA8 are all part of the TN VLAN. Uh, so you can kind of see there they've already been assigned. Now switch two to switch one and switch one to switch three need to be in trunking mode because again, it has to carry all the VLAN traffic. Um, so that's a good review as well as adding something new, a layer three uh, switch, which does layer three routing as well as layer two switching.